maybe does not require a father or mother to be present to train him to be an adult horse with all the abilities like the father. However, a baby requires all the nurturing for his development or her development. In other words, other animals when they are born, they are born like a full tree. But when a ba human baby is born, it's like a seed. That seed requires proper plantation, it requires proper fertilizer, it requires proper safety from the cold and hot weather and proper protection and then it will it can convert into a very big fruitful tree so this is why it is very important that all the parents all the potential parents must know the basic principles which are required for the nurturing of that uh, child when i was studying the western literature about it which is cognitive psychology which deals with the everything which happens in our head when we are learning it i was very happy to share with you that there is no principle, not even a single principle which I learned with authors from Western authors, which you cannot trace up to Uswa of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the life of the Sahaba Zwanullah Alaihi Ajma'in. So, uh, and I would like to just share with, with you. Simply speaking, the most important period of a life in an adult's life, in your life, in your life, in my life, is when a baby is born in a house, days zero to year five. These are the most important period in a parent's life. Because the whole foundation of someone's mental structure and patterns, they develop within five years. Initially, the book said seven years. But now with the presence of social media and also bombardment of so much knowledge and so much information, the maturity is attained much earlier. So five year is roughly the cutoff line. And you will be amazed to know that in 95% of the time in our whole life, we live according to the pattern which has been developed from day zero to year five. The rest of the change on it is only incremental change in the quality of it, in the, in, in the, in, in, so I mean the quantity of it. But like, like this building, the foundation, the structure of the building, the design, that is completed in five years. After five years, you can just lay these carpets, you can put a mic system, you can put, you know, all, with the quality, you go to a good university, you, you, you develop a good friendship, you read so many books, you have an environment. So you can just decorate it and improve your quality. But as far as the basic pattern related to the character of a person, that is zero to five years. And I can give you a reference from the quote, quote of Hazrat Ali Razi Allah He said that during, he actually divided the whole parenting into three phases. Phase one is the one which roughly, according to his saying, is around seven to years, which is close to five years, said during that period, you are like a nurse or a master to your child. And that is what modern psychology says, that during the first five days, five years, there are some do's and some don'ts. And I'll just enlist them one by one. The first thing is, a child does not learn what you ask him to learn. A child only learns what he experience around, experiences around him. For example, if you make a speech to a child less than five years of age, that you should be truthful, you should be God-fearing, you should be the one who will be very honest. But if he does not witness and experience this honesty in the person who is saying that, which happens to be his father or mother, then that will not be effective. No, this sentence is wrong. That will not only be not effective, it will be counterproductive. We ask them to be an honest person and he will become a dishonest person. And more serious thing is, he will pretend to be an honest person, but inside he will be dishonest person. So principle number one is, that during five years of the life, 
वट एवर यू क्रिएट एज एन एक्सपीरियंस अराउंड अ चाइल्ड इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू हिज बिहेवियर एंड नॉट वॉट वी से सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ वी वॉन्ट टू टीच आर चाइल्ड रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द एल्डर्स इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देयर स्टेटस एंड वी टॉक अबाउट इट इन आर फैमिली बट वेन अ ग्लास वॉज fell out of the hand of a servant lady servant working in the home i'm giving you an example from pakistan and the mother shouted at that lady and said how dare you broke that glass now no matter how much hadith you teach them how much you know uh, your sermons you have given to him how much honesty you have just uh, tried to talk to him but when this experience will be repeated his pattern will be that when someone inferior to you inferior in brackets does something then it is your right to scold him and this will become a pattern in his life if he just watches that there is a person in the home which is called abu ji when he comes he always kicks the gate and he is very angry if he finds little more salt in the dish and sometimes he throws the dish back and mom is very scared if that child is attached to the father and is a male child then for him it will be recorded as a pattern to be as a male and when he will be working in a school he will be bullying the other children when he will be married to to a lady then he will be behaving exactly the same way because it is he is not perceiving it as right or wrong it is perceiving it as the pattern and science also tells us that if he is more attached to the mother and if father is aggressor then that child for whole of the life will feel that i am a victim and he will live in a victim psychology right so i can give you so many examples but the most important thing which i want to just you know share with you is whatever you want to make your child just and whatever behavior you want to inculcate in them that behavior should be there visible full stop and our talking has to be very minimal it is what we do will actually be we children don't do what we ask them to do they do what we do this is number 1 number 2 is please remember that child less than 5 years of age does not have any yardstick or parameter of guna sawab ethical unethical moral immoral heaven or hell nice and not nice good or bad he does not have any yardstick based on this morality and ethics he does not judge the thing things on these parameters we adults we do a things which are nice we would like to do a thing which are ethical we would like to do but a child has only one criteria and that is lovable and non lovable that's it no ethics no guna no sawab no heaven and and science has proved that now wise parents are those that whatever they as an adult think is ethical what they think is right what they think is moral they have to create it in their environment as a lovable experience i can give you an example all of us want that our children should pray namaz is there anyone who does not want it alhamdulillah everyone wants namaz one way will be all the time be a policeman and a monitor it is very important to be important and unimportant does not have a this yardstick is not there in his in the system in his neurons so one way will be always telling him it is very important to pray it is it is a commandment of allah subhanahu wa taala it's the reek of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam you must be i'm not saying that we should not say it but better way will be that a child of Two months of age, just when he opens his eyes, he sees that a sound comes, and when that sound comes, suddenly something happens in a house. My Baba, my Grandpa, my elder brother, they just go into the washrooms, and when they come back, their hands are wet, and before that they were bareheaded, but then they just find some cap or some rumal, and they start going out. and something ha- happens with mama and the elder sister as well that she also covers her head and if she, for example tv is on so she says turn it off and then they also just have a piece of paper 
they spread it on one direction and they stand like this. And that child watches this for five times. And he watches it that when this activity is there, something happens and everything stops in a house. Now this child actually does not know, does not need to be told the five benefits written in the hadith for what they are very important. But this is how a child will learn the importance of salat. And one day you will see that your, your daughter, which actually is wearing a niqab, she's too young, one year, one or two years of age, two and a half years, barely standing, and you are praying, and suddenly you will say that she's standing beside you, and she's looking at your face, and she will be just doing like this. It happened with my granddaughter. So I was just uh, praying, and suddenly, I don't know, because I was praying, and my daughter-in-law uh, took, a, took a picture, and my granddaughter was just, and then I saw, show me the picture afterwards, and she was standing there with a small nika. It was a very summer season, and she was sitting like that, and she was trying to pull her shirt and dragging to cover her head. Right? Although we never talked salat about it. So I just gave you one example. Similarly, parents have got this problem that their children are not interested in books. They don't study. Now, a mother came to me and said, my son does not study. And I find it very difficult to convince him to read the books. I asked from him, sister, when did you read your last book? He said, Dr. Me? I said, yes, I'm asking from you. Has your child seen you reading books or not? He said, but I don't need to read the book. If you don't need, need to read the book, it means it is not important for you. And you are the role model for your child. When you are not reading the book, then your child will not read the book. So the, if we want that our children should be interested in books, then it's a very simple technique. One technique is always taught, being a monitor to them. Always open your books while you are playing. Just read. For the next two hours, I would, I would like you to just sit here and read the books. Now, it is not a lovable activity for them. You must have noticed, you know, I, I know I can tell you in Pakistani example, that whenever there is a half break, Adi Chuti, when the bell, bell rings, the room is air-conditioned, it is cool, and the playground is muddy, and it is hot. The child will immediately run as, as if he has come out from a jail. Although it is very comfortable to sit inside, but he will just go out and will start playing in that mud. Because that playing in a mud is a lovable activity. This reading, which is although looks like a decent activity, is not a lovable experience. So the first thing which I share with my brothers and sisters is, Please remember, children don't do what we ask them to do. They do what we do. Number two, I said, that children don't have, less than five years of age I'm talking, they don't have any yardstick or parameter measured on the basis of ethics and morality. Guna and sawa, right and wrong. They have only one thing which is lovable. So any activity, any pattern of the character which you want to build in your children, create it as a lovable activity. This morning, all of us will clean our home. Clapping. Baba will be just doing the hoover. Mama will be washing the bathrooms. And you, baby, will be washing the plates. Here, make it a celebration. No, it's a lovable activity. Make gardening as a lovable activity. Make going to Juma as a lovable activity, as a celebration. And then, if we do it like this, the only advice you have to give to your children regarding reading or studying will be, please sleep now, leave the book. That's the only thing you have to do afterwards, because that will become their second habit. So I can give you a lot of examples, but because of the time constraint, I wanted to just convey this message. Please, all those things which you want to inculcate in your children, create it as a lovable experience. Two. Now, number three. Please remember, getting a high academic score is not equatable with good character. I don't know about your environment in Pakistan. Mothers are very crazy that why my children is not giving 7A+. plus, Why he's, she's not scoring 10, 1,089 marks out of 11, at least 1,090 marks in 11. Why he's not doing doing great in MD MDCAT. MDCAT is a medical admission test, right? 
almost every household has got this problem that my, my, my son is not doing well. Please remember, it is very important that our children should study. It is very important they should good score. But gauging our children and gauging their character on the basis of their score is a very, very foolish way of doing it. Because it has nothing to do with their development of character. And how many of you are Pakistanis? How many of you are Pakistanis? Yeah. Okay. So, I cannot... I cannot share with you one day of my classroom, Jawad is my class fellow, till FSC, where I say that I love my country because I read it in studies of Pakistan. No. We cannot say that I respect my mama because I read it in my school that I have to respect my mama. So our academic education has got a value and that value is that it will fetch us a job, which is a good thing to do. But it has nothing to do with our character. Maybe this is an advanced word. Maybe you have got a curriculum which develops the character. I, I, I can't say I have no experience of, uh, you know, ed education system over here. But at least I can share my experience there. It will give you a good certificate and which, which will fetch you a job. But whether that person will be a characterful person or not, really, we are not sure. So these are, this is number three. The fourth thing, and then I'll shift to the second. I, I know it's, I've got about... 15 minutes more. The, so three things, should I repeat it? Number one, instead of asking them to do, let's do in front of them. Number one. Number two, I said that anything which is lovable will be accepted by a child. Anything, no matter how noble it is, if it is not lovable, it is not acceptable for child. Two. Number three, I said that it is not the academic score which is very important. We should give it a priority, but priority at least at five, five, six number. Before that, there are more important things which are related to the character development. Now, fourth, something which is don't, don'ts of this. Please remember, I'm a medical doctor. I can tell you with full responsibility, a child less than seven years of age does not have any chemical system which can handle the stress. When I do this workshop with the ladies, normally what I do is I say, oh, there's a snake. And at least 10 women just get up. Obviously, if I say there is a, something like that, and we, we know that in this mosque it will not possible. But suddenly we get up. Now imagine if suddenly a snake comes here. I know being a doctor that my chemical milieu will change. I will throw a lot of steroids in my body. I will throw adrenaline. I would say, noradrenaline, which in America is called epinephrine and norepinephrine, they will be thrown in my blood. My, my, you know, my blood from my kidney, they will just shift into my muscles and my eyes will open up so that I can be in a fight and flight mode. Now, imagine if just one snake comes like this, it changes our whole metabolism and blood will be drifted from those organs which require them for their development and growth. Because if there is a war, of course, you stop building the schools and hospitals because you need funds for the war, you have to buy weapons. So when someone is that stress situation, then develop blood supply to a kidney, blood supply to a liver, and more importantly, blood supply to a brain is decreased. Now imagine if whole seven years, a snake is just standing in front of me. And that's what we do with our children. Keeping them in stress all the time. Why your marks are not coming? Why in that, you know, meeting, you, you were just doing like this in front of auntie? It was so embarrassing. Why you did this? Why you didn't have a good score? Look, I, I'm not saying that we should not discipline our children. But when we put our children in, in, in stress, there is a scientific evidence that growth of their brain is compromised. Their out-of-box solution ability is gone. Their problem-solving ab ability, their critical thinking ability, that is gone. And they come into a fight on flight mode or a protective mode. And they have got inhibitions. And there are certain psychological effects which are there, which are not replenishable. And they are reflected in their future life throughout. So these are a few do's and don'ts at the age of five. If we follow them and a child smoothly moves into the next stage, Again, I will quote Has Ali, and who said, after the age of 7 to 13, 
now pre previously you were the ma he was the master and you were the slave or a nurse for the child but from 7 to 13 now you are the master and he's your servant which means now in a child at the age of 7 and you can also relate it that this is the time when we have to forcefully ask him for the namaz if a child of a 5 years age you ask him to go for namaz and he's not going for namaz so you you make a strategy to do it but actually you don't become very strict with them you don't start beating them you do it with a planning but after the age of 7 now this is the time that ethics morality good bad has to be inculcated in that and the principle now it's totally different now the principle after 7 although it is not just a very strict line obviously it's a gray area when I'm saying seven years, I mean, on 38th of the December, of December, you were doing this. On the 1st of January, you start doing different. It's not like that. So th there's a blunt area between them. But in this 17 to 13 year years, now this is the time that child has to, not to be punished, but child should know the consequences. These are different. And this is only possible if we do three things. One thing is that there has to be a documented principles of living in a house and each one has to follow it. For example, we all wake up at Fajr time. So Baba is also waking up at the Fajr time. Mama also wakes up in the Fajr time. Dadi, Amma sometimes not because she is ill and a child knows that since she is very sick, she cannot. But otherwise, so this is why there is an exception. So if there is an exception, that has to be documented. So there has to be a discipline. There is no TV in the house or if TV is turned on, it is between 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Everyone has to clean the room. So everyone has to do it. Mama, Baba, Dada, everyone. So after seven years, child has to be disciplined. And this discipline means if a discipline is not followed, we are not going to punish you. There are consequences and you have to face the consequence. So this is the pattern. I'm in a very short period of time, I cannot further elaborate it. But I just want to convey it that if you have a child between this age, you have to put them in discipline. We are not allowed to punish them in any case, but we have to be strict. For example, if a child says, I'm not going to eat, you don't going to eat? No problem. Don't eat. But the consequences is, then till morning you will not get the food. But you're not shouting, you're not angry. But now it is your duty to put that food as high as possible so that he cannot pick it. Make sure that you lock the refrigerator. I'm a doctor, I tell you, by the morning he will not have any medical problem. And if he wakes up to 12 o'clock and says, Mama, I'm hungry. Son, you said that I don't want to eat it. And the rule was that food, you will get the food in the morning. At that time, if child is, you know, crying, then like in our Punjabi, say Ma Sadke, then don't say Ma Sadke. And don't give them the food. But don't get angry with it because, I mean, you said it. And bear that time. So in other words, if you know Urdu Punjabi language, we must do lot of pyar, love to our children. But we must not do lard. Lard means accepting everything which a child demands. Now see, it is totally paradox from that five years of age. So one thing is, number one, develop a discipline. And everyone follows the discipline. Number two principle is that if a child asks a question, never postpone that question. This is the age when funny idea starts coming in the mind. And he can ask anything which may be very disturbing to us. When I conducted this workshop with my students, and some of the students were lady students. And after a few days, one, you know, one of, she was my resident. She came and said, sir, I followed. And I asked that every question should be asked. But my husband is very mad on me because my daughter said, mama, there is a question. Who is mama of God? And when my, my husband said, he was very angry. He said, look at it, what she is asking. So, so what should I do? So I'm giving you this, this example that even if any obnoxious, any difficult question, any unexpected question, whatever a child is asking, you cannot postpone it. 
What I suggest is, technically, have a whiteboard like this in a home. And when a child asks a question, if you can answer it, answer it. If you can't, okay, I go, son, it's a very interesting question. But I don't have an answer. Let me write it down on the board. And when Baba will come, we will discuss it. In the meantime, you also try to find it in Google. And anyone who finds the answer first, he will discuss it. On next Thursday after dinner, we will discuss it. Just put a board over there. It is miraculous. And you will see that even those logical answers which we could not deduce as an adult, your children will come up with the answer. Like in this God example, I asked that girl, let's just do it. Will you believe that after one month, that child of eight years of age, she said, Mama, I got the answer. He said, what is the answer? While she was just thinking, planning what to answer, she said, my answer is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I read it that no one has given birth to Allah and he has not given birth to anyone. She read it somewhere and he said, and moreover, he is a creator. And he is a creator, so no one creates. And she had a logical answer. And her, and her, her mother told me, she said, I never thought that an eight years old child can actually answer like this, so, so logically. So this is number two. And three, I am going to finish in five minutes, inshallah. Number three is, in this age bracket, the third important thing is, Whenever a child demands from you something, that is what? I want new pair of shoes. This is what? Second is how? How? It, it's available in that market. This is how. Now what we do is, from this what and how question, we go into how many question. Because we, as an adult we do, I need a car. From which car? This car. And then one car, two car, three cars, four cars. That's what we do as an adult. But if you want your child to be a characterful person, at the between 7 and to 13 years of age, when he asks some question, please let him answer the question what and then how. This is simple. But the third important question is why. I want shoes. What? From where you will get it? That shoe store. But why? Why? Because my friend also has got the shoes. This is not a valid answer to why. I want at least three pairs of shoes. This is not a valid answer. But Baba, I have started going to gym. This shoes is actually appropriate for gym. So this is why. Now this is a good answer for why. If you have a lot of money, but the why is weak, don't buy him the shoes. If you don't have the money, but the answer to the why is correct, please lend some money, you know, borrow some money from somewhere and buy it. So do's and don'ts of this age is, number one, discipline him. And then everyone has to role model the discipline. Number two, encourage him or her to ask questions and never postpone them. And number three is develop a why in, in, in that child. Because this will give him a great characteristic ability in that child, which is the ability to accept no. This is something the modern word has created in us that we are our children and even we as an adult don't accept no and this is why we have got problems at our job we have a problem at our relationship problems we have even problem with relationship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we get angry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I pray five times I have done hajj I do zakat why I'm poor I mean, we even start fighting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we are doing a business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right? So this is why these are three important things. Although, you know, we conduct this workshop in five, six days, but I would like to summarize it. Now, if we have done this pattern in the first phase and the same pattern which I have told you in the second phase, when a child will become adult, like at the age of 13, Hasali Raziallahu Anhu said that now, before that, you were the servant, he was the Akka, he was the Lord, and the second phase, uh, you, you were the master, uh, master, and he was the, he, he was the servant. And this age, you are friends now. Please remember, your responsibility is now over. Now, if we have done it correctly, you will have a mentor relationship with, with that child. And we, we have, last thing I'm doing, if we have not done it, then by this time, a child.